I had so much hurt and pain that I was trying to cover up. And one of the ways I tried to do that was with uh, weightlifting. I got into weightlifting and was obsessed with it. It became a total idol and obsession in my life. At one point I was on four different steroids at one time. You know, the thing that I was trying to, to use to cover up a lot of the hurt and pain uh, almost destroyed me. I, I had so much uh, health issues as a consequence of the drugs and lifestyle and I hurt so many relationships um, and people in my life because of this. I gave my heart to God when I was about five years old. I was so blessed to have a family, you know, that, that saw the value in seeking God. And in my teenage years, I, I really battled some tough things. Family started to fall apart. I felt like that sometimes I was not a good person, that, that God maybe didn't love me, and I had these, these kind of deep-rooted issues where I, I felt some inadequacy. And, and pretty soon that I was, I was not going to church anymore, I was not seeking God, I was not reading my Bible. You can imagine how things go when, when you start living that way and you start going after more of the world, less of God. Uh, pleasure and, and parties and money and drinking and eventually I, I got to this point where I avoided everything that had to do with God and praying and, and I, I avoided conversations with people about him. My dad would come to my house and try to share with me a little bit and I didn't want to talk about it. I'd, I'd plug my ears and you know I, I didn't want to hear it. It was, it was interesting that I had some uh, strange health issues over the last few years. I'm at home with my wife. The pain was so horrendous. I'm literally shaking and quivering in pain every night. Um, I, I don't know what to do, but yet I still, I still don't want to pray. I don't want to turn to God. And I, I, I see now that He was drawing me through that, but I was so hard-hearted and I didn't want to call out to Him and ask for help. I was bitter. I, I felt that He didn't work for some people in my life um, and that He wasn't going to work for me. So through a course of events, experienced some pretty hard things last year where my, uh, my wife and I, uh, our marriage started falling apart. We uh, separated. And soon after that, um, God used somebody in my life to speak some truth to me and say, you're not living, you're not living right. God was a big part of your life before. And uh, I thank God for that person and for being obedient to, to speak those words to me. I remember sitting in my truck that day. I couldn't go back into work. I was just bawling my eyes out, calling out to God. And I, I suddenly realized all the things that I had been doing, this life that I was living, was so far away from Him. I went home that day and I, I got on my face and I called out to Him many times, day after day, calling out to Him, repenting of things, asking Him for help and forgiveness, and calling out for, you know, asking Him, is there, is there, some of these even past things and issues that I had in my heart that uh, were burdens from when I was a kid. I started to see the, the, the condition, the state I was in was, was going to send me to hell. Um, I, I knew that I was condemned because of my actions and my sin and my, my lack of uh, seeking Him. I got to this point where I... I felt I had repented of everything that I had uh, done wrong. I had turned back to Him, I had called out to Him, asked for help, but I still had this situation in my life with, uh, with my marriage and things that I, I didn't know what to do with, and I was calling out to Him for help, and I was still honestly seeking His hand. Um, I, I, wanted, I wanted not only Him, but I also wanted Him to fix my situation, fix this this scenario that I was in in my life that I had caused. Um, I, had, I had put together this mess in my life um, and I was convinced he was going to fix it. I wanted, I wanted God to uh, restore my marriage. I thought he could do it and I was, I, I, I almost believed, I knew he would do it and he would have to do it because this is what God would want. He would want to you know, um, he would want me to be reconciled with my wife and we would have this loving, Christian, faithful marriage. I was praying for that and I was actually going out and, and trying to find promises in the Bible and, and texting everybody I knew, 
please pray for my marriage and for me. I, I went to her and I told her that I, I turned to God and that um, the way we were living and what we were doing and this split up, I didn't feel that it was of God. It's not what He would have us do. And uh, I begged her to start praying and seeking Him. And I don't know that um, she was totally willing to fully give herself to God and, and give us another try. I started going on YouTube and trying to find out videos on marriage and how God could save my marriage. And I came across uh, this video that said, don't be surprised if God runs off your unbelieving spouse by this guy named Michael Criswell. And uh, I, I turned it on. I actually played it for about two or three minutes. And I got so angry because I, I could tell the context of this video was not what I wanted to hear. It was, it was talking about holding loosely and things. And I said, no, no, this isn't, this isn't for me. Went back to my, you know, really holding on to, uh, God's gonna fix this, he's gonna do it. I know he, he, he's for my marriage, he's for me. So over the course of the next couple of months, I started seeking him more, started to realize that, you know, maybe, maybe things weren't gonna work out the way I wanted them to. So my prayer started changing a little bit. My, my attitude changed a little bit where I actually started thinking, well, God, if you're not gonna fix this, what can you do for me for the rest of my life? And, and it was still a selfish attitude. I really hadn't come to the end of me. I really hadn't given, given him everything. I was still holding on to many things. You know, I had repented of some of these things in my life. I, I turned from a lot of the, uh, the sin, the worldliness. I'm ridding my life. I'm asking him, God, is there anything else I can do to get rid of the junk in my life? And um, I'm taking a lot of action on those things, but I really, in my heart, I hadn't, I hadn't really poured myself out. I hadn't really come to the end of me and said, God, you know, your will be done. I, had, I, I didn't want to pray that because I was afraid of what his will might be. I was really holding on to this idea that my old life could continue with him in it. At that point, I didn't have any hope that even God could turn me around or have any kind of future for me. I felt like I was coming to this end of my life and I was only 30 some years old, I felt that, and that I would have to live the rest of this life, another 50 years, miserable and down and just riddled with pain. Um, the pain was incredible. Uh, the depression was unbelievable. I would uh, have these night terrors and uh, terrible dreams. Uh, I would have panic attacks at work. I, I would wake up in just pure panic multiple times a night, just yelling out and, and screaming almost, um, just under a lot of torment. I keep imagining myself dying. I thought of it this morning when I got out of bed and I saw the shotgun sitting there against the wall. I know I wouldn't. I couldn't hurt others that way. And I know I would end up in hell. But the pain will not stop. If it stops, I just feel numb. I don't want to die. I just don't want the pain anymore. I know my life will never be the same, and even though I might be happy again, I will miss the people I love. And that same week that I wrote that note, I attended a church service. Uh, I went forward during the praise and worship, and I was just standing at the altar just with my eyes closed and my hands in the air just calling out to God, and I said, God, it's me and you. I told him it's me and you now. And that was the end of me. I, I died that day. I died to self. I surrendered everything. And, and uh, it was painful, it hurt because All the hopes and dreams that I had, all the, all the things that I had established in my mind that were going to make a good life, I gave up on. And I truly said, God, you're what we do. I've got nothing left. I, I knew that I could trust him. I knew for once that I could give him everything, my whole heart, and that he wouldn't hurt it. I, I could never do that with anybody on this earth before. And I said, God, I fully trust you. So I gave him my whole heart. And 
wow, the peace and joy that came after that was incredible. Uh, I started driving to work laughing and smiling and singing. And I didn't know how. In fact, it felt strange that that this could be happening. I didn't really understand it. And I, and I, I didn't even tell anybody because they probably would think I'm medicated or crazy. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, it was real. And it continued for months. It's still continuing. <laughs> I, uh, I wake up every day with, with peace. I thank him every day that I woke up again. A couple months after that, God had told me that he would guide me when, when the time came on how, to, on how to act and what to do. And um, so this weekend came up where I had to make a decision on how to proceed, what to do with my wife and with this divorce. I, I started fasting and praying that weekend. Uh, seeking God for some answer on the situation. Man, it was probably a half day into this fast that I go on YouTube to try to just maybe see what others have done. And I didn't even search for anything. I just opened up YouTube on my, on my cell phone. And the first thing, the first suggested video is this same video of Michael Chris Wells <laughs> that don't be surprised if God runs off your unbelieving spouse. And, uh, <laughs> so this time my heart was a little bit different and I said well maybe there's something here maybe there's maybe God's got something in this for me and I played it and I listened to the whole message and the words jumped out hold on loosely and God confirmed that in my heart that that's what I needed to do and that, that he would be with me and that he would continue to guide me through this and give me grace to get through this and, and the following week I was able to, to at, with some peace make this decision and, and move forward I, I bought Michael's book, The John 717 Challenge, and uh, I, I found so much truth that I wasn't hearing in, in the church. And I was so excited to find the book that somebody was speaking the truth and saying how to become a true follower and, and not giving in to this uh, complacency and compromise that you see so often. And it excited me, and I, and I soon uh, started getting the books for other people. I started passing this book around to other people, and I, I think a lot of people are being changed and blessed by it. Those who are really open, whose hearts are really open to God, will love to hear that message of truth. And it's a funny thing, uh, now I'm sitting in Michael's living room uh, recording this message. Michael's a great brother of mine, and I appreciate him now, and I thank God for him every day. And uh, you know, through this ministry, he's, he's helped me a lot. And uh, to God be the glory, God, God be praised. He's God is now directing my life and giving me peace. And I have such, such hope now that I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I have no idea. I know if I had died in a car wreck a year ago, I, I, I'd spend eternity in hell. And God be the glory that He called me back. And it's, it's, no, it's nothing that I could have done on my own because He orchestrated the entire thing. He, he gave me, He showed me mercy and gave me another chance. This opportunity is there for anybody. It's there for anybody. And I go around proclaiming this and telling everybody because so many people are hurt and damaged by this world. And everybody, even the person that seems to be the most well-off and secure and, and happy and have finances, in some way they feel inadequate or they're damaged by this world. They've tried many things to ease that pain and soothe that pain. Only God can heal that and it's designed to be that way. There is liberty to those who are bound up by this pain and guilt and suffering and loss. There's hope. There definitely is hope. I, I just can't believe I, I missed this for so long. And I, I pray to Him every day almost and just I, I say I can't believe how long I went without this. <laughs> it's hard to believe. It's hard to believe that I, I could have had this my whole life. And I missed a lot of years, but he's redeeming those years. He's even he's catching me up. He's 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 alive and he's my redeemer. And he's with me every day. And I know the years that are left are 
are going to be good with him. And even if they're tough, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because I can get through anything with him. Uh, anything is possible for the one that believes. Paraded. And soon after that, um, God used somebody in my life to speak some truth to me and say, you're not living, you're not living right. God was a big part of your life before. And uh, I thank God for that person and for being obedient to, to speak those words to me. I remember sitting in my truck that day. I couldn't go back into work. I was just bawling my eyes out, calling out to God. And I, I suddenly realized all the things that I had been doing, this life that I was living was so far away from Him. I went home that day and I, I got on my face and I called out to Him many times, day after. I gave my heart to God when I was about five years old. I was so blessed to have a family, you know, that that saw the value in seeking God. And in my teenage years, I, I really battled some tough things. Family started to fall apart. I felt like that sometimes I was not a good person, that, that God maybe didn't love me, and I had these these kind of deep-rooted issues where I, I felt some inadequacy. And and pretty soon that I was I was not going to church anymore, I was not seeking God, I was not reading my Bible. You can imagine how things were really shaking and quivering in pain every night. Um, I, I don't know what to do, but yet I still I still want to pray. I don't want to turn to God. And I, I, I see now that He was drawing me through that, but I was so hard-hearted and I didn't want to call out to Him and ask for help. I was bitter. I, I felt that He didn't work for some people in my life um, and that He wasn't going to work for me. So through a course of events, Experienced some pretty hard things last year where my, uh, my wife and I, uh, our marriage started falling apart. We uh, separated. I had so much hurt and pain that I was trying to cover up. And one of the ways I tried to do that was with uh, weightlifting. I got into weightlifting and was obsessed with it. It became a total idol and obsession in my life. At one point I was on four different steroids at one time. You know, the thing that I was trying to, to use to cover up a lot of the hurt and pain uh, almost destroyed me. I, I had so much uh, health issues as a consequence of the drugs and lifestyle and I hurt so many relationships um, and people in my life because of this go when, when you start living that way and you start going after more of the world, less of God. Uh, pleasure and, and parties and money and drinking and Eventually, I, I got to this point where I avoided everything that had to do with God and praying, and, and I, I avoided conversations with people about Him. My dad would come to my house and try to share with me a little bit, and I didn't want to talk about it. I'd, I'd plug my ears, and you know, I, I didn't want to hear it. It was, it was interesting that I had some uh, strange health issues over the last few years. I'm at home with my wife. The pain was so horrendous. I'm, 